Hey guys, um, I'm here to do my um, April April wrap up. Um, I did want to mention a really fast though. Um, I guess I should have them like more prominently displayed. I'm doing a giveaway of these books here. Um, so if you want to see what the books are, if you can't tell based on the spine being far away, um, I'm gonna link my library book sale haul down below where I purchased too many books. Um, I'll see if I can try to like put it where the, cause it's book haul first and then giveaway second. So I'll try to put that there. But anyways, yeah. So if you want to enter one of those, um, all right. So I finished, uh, four novels, two children's books and like a novella thingy. So I'm going to talk about the small things first. Um, uh, this is how much land does a man need by uh, Leah Tolstoy. And I don't, no. Oh, translated by Ronald Wilkes. Uh, so this actually has how much land does a man need and also what men live by. Uh, how much land does a man need was so good. Um, it was so good. This, this whole, this, this was so good. <laughs> um, the first one, how much land does a man need is basically like a man going to a place and he just is basically greedy and like wants land and things don't turn out that great because you know, when we're greedy, uh, bad things happen. And then the second one, um, what men live by, is that what I said it was called? What men live by is basically the story of like two, uh, I think the guy is a, like a shoemaker or something and he finds a man on the side of the road and takes him in and then stuff happens. They're very short, so I don't really want to explain, but the, the first one was like very kind of like ironic and hilarious. And the second one was very uplifting, super, uh, like religious kind of, uh, not kind of a very religious, and I am not a religious person, but it still was like, made me cry and was really beautiful and heartwarming. And um, I really enjoyed both of these. This was <laughs> a joy. Um, the next two uh, are the children's books that I read, um, which were two picks that I got from Indie Bookstore Day. The first one is Life Doesn't Frighten Me, uh, which is a poem by Maya Angelou. And it's um, with paintings by John michel Basquiat, um, edited by Sarah Jane Boyers. And it's just a little poem with uh, paintings and it's very beautiful and I'm very happy to have this on my shelves now. Uh, very nice. And then this is The Dangerous Journey by Tove Jansen and this is, I guess it's uh, it's a tale of Moomin Valley so it's like this, this oh gosh, I'm really don't want to, <laughs> uh, this girl who's cat and then she goes on a journey and it's fine. <laughs> I gave this three stars. It's like not anything special, but the artwork is really, really beautiful. And I do want to read um, actual, like, Moomin comics. Um, th this is just, like, kind of related to that. All right. Uh, so next with the novels. Um, so the first one was a holdover from last month, which was Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. Um, Y'all, this was so good. Um, I feel like I have seen some people say some negative things about it. There's magical realism in this book and it is a little odd at times, but I honestly think that this is the most emotional read that I've had this year. And the book, like this is my favorite book of the year so far. Um, it's the one that's touched me the most. Um, in this book, we're following Jojo and um, Leonie and they're going to go pick up um, Michael from prison. Michael is Jojo's dad and Leonie's lover person. I don't think that they're married. Um, Michael is white, Leonie is black, and so Jojo is mixed race, and his white side of the family is like pretty much racist. Yeah. Um, I'm, except for Michael, obviously, because he's, you know, with this lady. Um, and so that's like part of the story. There's so much, there's so much to unpack in this story. Um, it's, it's so beautiful. The thing that I appreciate the most about this book, though, I don't really want to like I mean, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, really, that would, like, entice you, I guess, to read it. But I do want to say that the thing that I thought was so good about Jasmine's writing is that when we're reading... So Jojo and Lainey have this very uh, fraught relationship, I guess you might say. Um, Lainey didn't want to have kids. She got knocked up on accident. Jojo's her older son, and then she's got a younger daughter, um, Kayla. And so Jojo and Kayla are, like, really, really bonded because Lainey is, you know, drug addict and isn't really there for her kids. Um, but you can see that Lanny really wants to, I feel like her relationship with Jojo is kind of like on the brink of not really being saved, but she really, really wants Kayla to like want her. And it's so, <laughs> it's so good because when you're reading from Jojo's perspective, you're like, this woman is terrible. Like 
you know, like you, you have no sympathy for Leonie, um, and you have like all the sympathy for Jojo and, you know, it's like, I just feel so bad for Jojo that he's abandoned and he has to like, you know, rely on his grandparents and like all of this stuff. But then when you're reading from Leonie's perspective, you're like, wow, Jojo's being kind of a brat. Like I, if he could just give her a chance and like, you know, people change and she's trying to be there for her kids. So I thought that that, the fact that Jasmine could do that to me, like make me switch back and forth between like how I feel with regards to the relationships between the two of them, I thought was really, really great. Um, basically all of these characters are super well-rounded um, and I really like books that explore um, aspects of people that are not just like cookie cutter. I'm getting really really sick and tired. I have like uh, so many rants that I want to do in general that I don't do on this channel just because I don't know why but um, I'm very sick of people like painting people with a brush like you're this way or you're this way. People are like multidimensional, very complex characters. And these all are very complex characters <laughs> in this book. There is some magical realism that gets a little wonky towards the end, but um, my emotional involvement and attachment to the character, it's like, it like far surpassed any kind of like negative feelings I might have had towards that magical realism. Um, and I do want to say that there is a very, very graphically violent scene um, part of the story is going back in time and seeing um, this character Richie which um, Jojo's grandfather um, he was in this jail parchment um, which I think it was supposed is like a slave jail or like a jail for I don't know it's something like that and so um, Richie was going to the jail was going to the jail like at school. <laughs> um, sorry that was you know what I mean. Uh, so they, they were in in prison together and um, and, um, so there, there's like a very graphic, like violent scene that made me like weep openly in public, like unstoppable and thinking about it makes me want to weep again because I don't like it when people are mean to other people. <laughs> and by mean, I mean like horrible. <laughs> so, uh, there is a lot in this book. Um, if you could just look past, <laughs> the, <laughs> like if you're not into magical realism, like, I don't know. I still think there's a lot to be said about this book and I think a lot to be gained from reading it. Yeah, so definitely uh, my favorite book of the year so far. Like I already kind of want to reread it. I feel like I say that about a lot of books that I read and then I don't actually reread any of them. <laughs> um, so uh, the next one that I have is um, The uh, the Dinner Guest by Gaviela uh, Yabara, and this one is translated by uh, Natasha Wimmer. Um, this I thought was also really, really good, um, but I feel like the reason I think this is really good is specifically because of my past and last year with my father. Um, she, I think the writing is very, very nice. Um, I do think this is probably in retrospect kind of like a plain-ish book, um, but she, it's about loss again. Um, the first section is about how her father passed, or her father, her grandfather um, died and then um, the majority of the book has to do with her mother and her mother's hospitalization and um, reading that of course triggered a lot of emotions in me because my dad was hospitalized last year and then passed away and so I feel like I had a very strong connection to this because of that so I don't know um, I honestly don't remember a ton about this book so that's you know <laughs> not a great sell <laughs> um, but I, I it really moved me while I was reading it so it was, that was nice, but that's, that's really all I got. Sorry, guys. Um, next one is Sweet Frances. This is one of the books that I'm giving away <laughs> on my haul. Um, so I feel like my shelves look so sad over here. There's no books in them. I should put some books in there. Um, so this is uh, Sweet Frances by Irene Nemirovsky, and this is translated by Sandra Smith, and I feel like I've talked about this a ton on my channel recently, um, so I'm not gonna, I guess, I don't know, maybe I've just been talking to people about it a lot, so you can fast forward if I've already talked about it too much and you don't want to hear, um, but this, oh my gosh, also super, super emotional. Irene Nemirovsky was, I think she was Ukrainian born um, and Jewish, and she moved to Paris uh, during, the, there's like this whole, so the book is, <laughs> let me rah, 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 rewind, um, the book is set up in four sections, I guess. So there's the two, the two novels, um, Storm in June and Dolce. And then we've got appendices and the appendices, I guess most of it is just the book, but, um, in the appendices, there's, uh, letters that are being written, um, during the time of the Holocaust and then a little bio on her. So I'm just going to give you kind of like a little bit of the bio right now. Um, but 
they fled, um, her family fled, uh, I think it was Ukraine or Russia, somewhere around there, uh, during the time of the Bolshevik Revolution because her father worked for like a large bank and so then they moved to Paris. And uh, yeah, so basically if you were Jewish and in France, maybe not Paris, but in France, if you're Jewish and in France, uh, it wasn't a good time for you during the Holocaust because the Nazis took over, okay? So, and the first people to go to concentration camps were foreign-born Jews. You know, the Nazis had, a, you know, they, they did things very like, uh, you know, like, so um, foreign-born Jews were the first ones kind of sent away. So she was one of these people. And oh my gosh, the bio at the end, woo! It killed me. The letters to, uh, it's so sad because her husband is trying to get her back because he loves her and in trying to get her back, he writes all of these letters and like all you're doing is calling attention to yourself. So of course he gets interned also. Ugh, it's so, it's so heartbreaking. But anyways, I guess you want to hear about the actual book. Um, this is like multi-perspective, different types of people. Um, you know, all, all kinds of different people. Um, it, the, the two are related. Um, the, the first book and the second book, um, we have, so many different characters. There's, you know, like an elderly couple. There's like a super rich family. There's this like writer guy who's super narcissistic. And so it just kind of like explores um, what is happening when these people hear that uh, France is being invaded by Germany. And so everyone's kind of trying to like flee Paris because they think, um, I don't know, I, I guess there maybe there were parts of, of France that were not, um, I can't think of the word. Uh, occupied, um, that weren't occupied. Um, but everyone's trying to flee Paris. And then, um, in the second half of the book, it's when the occupation has already, um, the occupation's already happening. And so we're mostly getting, um, these characters that kind of like live in the country a little bit and they have Germans that are in their town living in their houses. And, um, yeah, so you get all kinds of different characters. My favorite, she, she's such a good writer. One of my favorite chapters is from the perspective of a cat. Um, I think she does a really, really good job of, like describing things in a way that um, it's like very like I don't know like tactile almost and like you can just like feel it a little bit so I really really enjoyed the writing um, and I my favorite storyline actually uh, well the one that I remember I, there's a really interesting storyline in the first book too about um, one of the sons of this like big family and um, he's a priest pastor father. I don't know. I'm not religious. I already mentioned, I don't know what the difference is between all of these things. And he's got like this group of kids that he's trying to like help. And yeah, things don't go super great. Um, but, um, in the second part, there's, a like a woman who's living with her mother-in-law and her husband and the, the woman's son are, uh, is a political prisoner. And so they've got a German soldier living with them. And so the mother like hates this man so much. Um, but you know, like there's this, there's this like Thing between him and the lady and it's just like again it's just showing like how multi-dimensional characters are which I really really appreciate because like just you know not just because he is a Nazi but like people have more to them <laughs> than just what's there so like you can't it's it's hard because you know this guy is but he's also torn away from his family and like you know he's also suffering so uh, it's it's I thought it was I, I thought it was absolutely beautiful and just wonderful. Um, the actual story in general, um, it, sh it shows you different types of people and how everyone reacted kind of to what was going on. And I thought it was so beautiful that she was writing this. Like, honestly, sh it was supposed to be like a five part series and she was taken only after finishing the first two. And like, this was like hidden and stuff. So like the fact that she was able to create this and have like have this come out of her when she's like in such a fraught time where she's in fear of her life like every day it's just like it blows my mind um, I also really liked this because um towards the end um like in the appendices there's a part of I think actually before maybe the letters there's a little like outline she is a very meticulous writer so she doesn't just like go for it like some people do she outlined before even starting the first book how like she was figuring out like how many pages each one would have and you know what would happen to the characters so even though this wasn't completed like the actual full thing wasn't completed I could kind of see like where the characters storylines would go which I much prefer over like people you know, coming and taking over and finishing a series for someone that's passed away like that. I just can't with that, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I thought this was very, very good and beautiful. Uh, World War Two, 
I guess it's not really historical fiction because it was written during the time, so it's contemporary to World War II. That makes sense, right? Yeah, okay. And last thing I have is Human Acts by Han Kang. And this was a buddy read with Derby from Derby Lane, and I still forgot to send her a stupid message about how I feel about this book. Um, this is translated by Deborah Smith, obviously. I, I, I knew that. Um, so this takes place <laughs> during, like, you know, political unrest in South Korea in the 80s. At least uh, that's where it kind of, like, starts. So um, it's it starts in 85, I think, or 1980. Mm. Oh, my gosh. This is embarrassing. 80, 1980, and then um, there's multiple sections. Each one is told from a different perspective, and I think it, like, goes up until, like, the 2000s. I don't know, like, how deep into the 2000s, but um, we're basically following a group of characters. That's not right. Um, I don't really want to say anything about this book. Man. I don't want to say anything about this book. I will say... It takes a lot of attention, so I started reading it, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I, again, this is kind of one that I want to reread because I feel like now that I've read the whole story, I can go back to the beginning and like really understand what was happening because I didn't appreciate how young this kid was at the very beginning. So um, our main main character, Dong Ho, or like at least the person that like kind of keeps the whole narrative together, um, I felt like he was older, but I was reading from his perspective, so you know, maybe <laughs> I thought he was older because he thought he was older, um, trying to be in this area. So he's, uh, taking care of, um, bodies that have been murdered by the government, by the military, um, in South Korea during this time. Um, and yeah, it's just like really, really emotional. And I honestly don't know what to say about this book because I don't want to say anything about it because I just want you to read it. Um, but again, it takes a lot of focus, pay attention. Um, Things happen that I just want you kind of to discover for yourself. So I'm not going to say anything else about it. Um, yeah. Hmm. It was fantastic. I would recommend reading it. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so those were all the things that I read. I can't believe this video is so long. I talked about saying I'm buried saying way too long. Sorry, people. Um, if you've read any of these and have opinions, I feel like most of these are like pretty hyped. So maybe... You know, you've got some things that you want to say to me in the comments about them. If you have spoilers, please uh, write spoiler real big so people don't read it, uh, especially, I don't know, maybe, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I hope everyone else had a great April, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.